Joining me on my session, configuration in Azure done right. We had a small glitch in starting, so oh, we are six minutes behind schedule. I will try to make up for that, but I'm not really sure if I can because we have a lot of content to cover today. Um, I would like to thank uh, Script Runner, uh, DQ Global, Proximo3, Red Spire, Agilisys, and Hitachi Solutions for making Scottish Summit 2021 possible. And I would like to thank the organization for giving me the opportunity to tell you about configuration in Azure done right. So again, I might skip over some of the not so interesting stuff like, well, I'm Rick and you obviously know that because you saw that I was going to do this session. I am a principal cloud architect. I work at Betabit, which is a Dutch company and we help customers build awesome software. That's actually what we're doing the entire day. So. That's a nice thing. Um, so what I would like to go through today is uh, do a short introduction, uh, talk to you about application settings, then talk to you about an Azure service called App Configuration. I would like to touch upon Key Vault and managed identities for Azure resources. And then at the end, we'll have a short closing. Um, so let's first start with what exactly is configuration, right? So Configuration files are files used to configure the parameters and initial settings for some computer programs. Um, and in the end, that's what makes your application run the way it should run. Now, if you look at the different types of options that we have for configuration, um, way back when, and the fact that I actually worked with these myself uh, says a lot about my age, uh, but a long, long time ago, we had INI files, right? And I think INI was probably short for um, initialization. So these INI files, uh, like you see the example here, they had sort of like um, groups or categories uh, between the uh, straight brackets, and then you get some settings below, below that. Then after the INI files, Microsoft started pushing the registry, and they said, if you have anything in your application that you want to save, so that maybe even if your application goes away and comes back and you want to have that there again, uh, let's do a registry. Well, that uh, worked, but also didn't work too good because, yeah, it was, uh, we had some issues with the registry once in a while. So after ASP.NET became bigger and bigger, uh, or when ASP.NET became bigger, bigger and bigger, they uh, started moving stuff into .config files. And I think the most well-known version of that one is the web.config file that you use to um, configure your ASP.NET application. And then with ASP.NET Core, along came application settings.json, uh, since we thought that XML wasn't the best way of storing information, since it has a lot of uh, overhead, we now moved into having JSON files for our configuration. And all of these worked in their own way. And I think application settings.json and even web.config are now relatively nice and good ways of managing uh, configuration settings for your applications. So we're talking about Azure here because we're in the Azure developer track. So as soon as we go towards Azure, um, and when we talk about web applications, we would move towards um, the app service or maybe even a function app. And as soon as you start working with app service, what you get is application settings. And application settings is actually a UI. And here in the example, we see is very small uh, window where we can see that configuration is selected. And then you have two types of information that you could store there. One is application settings and the other is connection strings. So you could either have, for instance, an email address that you would like to use to send emails from uh, be posted here but also a connection string to, let's say, a storage account or a database. Um, those application settings are um, passed in as environment variables to your application. And Microsoft is beginning to work more and more with application settings being available as environment variables. And uh, we are going to touch upon managed identities for Azure resources uh, later on. But I would like to say that also for configuring some stuff locally, 
Microsoft is now working heavily with environment variables. And one of the most important things, I guess, is the fact that those can also be available cross-platform. So that enables you to run your application on other platforms as well. Now, as soon as we start working with the application settings that are available in App Services or in a function app uh, in Azure, um, in ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core, they are like the app settings part in a web config or the app settings.json file. They are the exact same key value pairs, and you can even have nested stuff. Um, but the cool thing is that values that you post into the application settings under an app service, and if I'm going too fast on this one, I will have a demo, so bear with me. Uh, but those values override the ones that you have in your web.config or your app settings.json file. Now, this means, uh, together with the third point, dev settings are in web config or in app settings.json. Um, the cool thing is, you could have a debug, in the case of web.debug.config, or a local development, like app settings.localdevelopment.json, that has the, the values that you would like to have while working locally, right? But um, as soon as you want to go into the cloud and have your configuration information be available there or on the, on the, on the sorry, on the platform where you, you would like to run your application, um, it would be nice that you can have the UI and manage it from there. So that's where app settings uh, from your app service come in. But those are automatically overwriting the ones that you have in your web config or your app settings.json. Uh, the settings are encrypted at rest. They are hidden by default, so you can't um, disclose information uh, by accident by just going to the app service. And you can also bulk edit them. Now, I can imagine that this is a lot of information to take in and a lot of different uh, types of information. So let's go to a short demo. Let me switch to the Azure portal right here. And as you can see, my uh, talk is called uh, Confi Configuration in Azure Done Right. So I abbreviated it to Sayadar. Sayadar, I'm not sure how to pronounce that in English uh, because it's also not a Dutch word. So, But this is actually all of the resources that I have available currently under my um, resource group for the demos that would, I would like to do. Now, what I would like to show now is the fact that we have a website available right here. So this is the website of uh, configuration in Azure done right. And you can go there to the URL yourself and see what happens. But what I would like to show, and I'm going to see if no, zooming will not help me. So I'm going to zoom the old fashioned way. Um, so what you can do is you can go into configuration and then just like we saw in the in the screenshot that I had on the, on the page, we have application settings right here. And you can see that there's a lot of information in there already. Uh, and you could, could have a connection string down here. So to your storage account, to your database, to your, sorry for that one, to your storage account, to your database, or to an external resource like an API, those connection strings could be in here if you need them to. Um, but this is what configuration under an app service looks like. Now, there's also, as you can see, general settings, which have something to do with uh, the runtime that you're running on or the platform, something about default documents and some path mappings, but these are the settings. Now, uh, what you can do, and then I think I have to make it just a little bit smaller for me to be able to at least see the UI because the Azure portal apparently doesn't scale all too well. Um, what you can see here is that these are hidden values. So that's what I said, those are hidden by default. And you can either delete values here or edit them from the portal straight up. Now, what I would like to show you is an application that I created that's running on this app service, and it's not uh, all that complex, but I would like to take a little bit of time to look at least at the first page and what it's doing. So this is an ASP.NET application, right? And uh, as far as that goes, there's nothing uh, fancy about that. Also in startup, I have a default constructor, uh, which I get iConfiguration in, and then I have iConfiguration and a apparently public property on my startup. And then I do some uh, default stuff like enabling static files and routing and authorization, and that's it. 
right? That's the entire startup of this application. So nothing fancy here. Then if I go into program.cs, and I am going to, yeah, it would be nice to have this out the door for now. I'm going to have it back eventually. Now here we are seeing some extra things added. And this is where the next step of our application comes in. So apart from the fact that we do this little part here, there's nothing uh, weird going on here either. So we will get back to the other line later on. Now, if we go to index, index is this really uh, fancy complex page that actually says, here's the value for setting one, and then it shows the value for setting one with an HTML raw so that we can at least see what the value for setting one is. And of course, in the code behind, what we do is we get iConfiguration injected the exact same way every ASP.NET application works right now. We get uh, configuration injected right there, iConfiguration. We get it injected into the constructor. We set it to underscore configuration. And then on the get of this page, we get the value for setting one and we post that to the page. So let's have a short look. Setting one, this value is from appsettings.json. That's what's currently in my appsettings.json. So if I run this application, I should be able to see that value come up on my page. Now, first of all, let's go to overview, open up that URL that we have. I would have normally done this just before uh, the session, but we were busy trying to get my, uh, my connection to work. So apparently, uh, I didn't give myself time enough to do this. So this is the well-known slow start for an ASP.NET application. Of course, you can uh, get this out of the way by having uh, always on enabled on your app service. But what we see right here is the page that we just looked at. This is index. We have configuration, Azure done right, and then here's the value for setting. And this is the actual setting coming from the backend. Now, here's the cool thing. I'm going to, you might uh, know this one already, but I'm going to duplicate this tab and then if you are um, familiar with the Kudu environment, I can go to uh, gr-websites.scm.azurewebsites.net, and I could go there as well by going to, I always have to look, advanced tools here, and then click this link. That's actually the exact same link. And then I go into Kudu services, and now I see the, well, let's say, the back end of my application. So if I go into debug console and I go into command and I go to site, so I can actually click uh, things here and then in the uh, command shell down below, we can see what's happening. Here we have the app settings JSON that was actually published from my Visual Studio. Yes, I'm sorry, but it was a demo. So I right click published. Um, but this is actually the file that I got and it was updated yesterday in the afternoon. So if you look at this, then I can see this value is from appsettings.json. Now, the cool thing is, since this is a file editor, I could also say, well, let's do Scottish Summit 2021, because that's the hashtag um, that we would want to use. So let's say use the hashtag, and then Scottish Summit 2021. Now, if I save this down, I'm actually saving down the, uh, the app settings file that's under my application that's running, right? So I might, wow, we're already, already there. See, I refreshed it and the value is already there. So now I can see, use the hashtag, hash Scottish Summit 2021. That's because my app settings.json is the file that's initially used to get settings from, and then it's shown here. And now let's uh, have a look at the cool thing that configuration does for us. So if I now go into configuration, and uh, if you were paying attention uh, the first time I opened it, you saw that there was no setting one here. But if I just say I would like a new application setting, I'll call this setting one. And then let's have this, do I have a space in there? That's not what it's supposed to be. And then this value, I have a different keyboard, so this might decide it from, I'm doing two things at the same time. Application settings, move the typo, 
So if I now add this one, and I do OK, and I click Save, it says, OK, so you're actually doing stuff in configuration. This will restart your application. Are you OK to do so? And I say, sure, let's restart it, because otherwise I don't see the new values. Now, it's probably still restarting, and maybe I should help it manually. Ah, it's waiting now, so we see the loading indicator. So as soon as this one comes up now, we should see the setting that we just added. This value is from application settings. So my application hasn't changed. The value was initially in application settings.json. I changed it there, and then it changed in the application. And now I added a setting with the same name to my configuration under my application. So here is setting one. And now the value for this setting is automatically picked up by the application. And nothing is changed in the code. So that's already a pretty powerful thing. That's what application settings and an app service can do for you. But wait, <laughs> there's more. Because as soon as you have configuration in Azure, um, that would be awesome if it works the way it works right now, if you only have one application, right? But if you have multiple applications that, for instance, connect to either the same backend service or use the same API keys or have the same connection strings to databases, you don't want to edit them in each and every app service or function app to be able to connect to the correct version. You just want to have it available on one central location. Well, that's where Azure App Configuration comes in. Azure App Configuration is a separate service that enables you to store all types of information that are configuration for an application. So it's a universal, fully managed configuration store uh, that enables you to do fast retrieval of configuration for any Azure application. Even furthermore, it's a general configuration store. So as far as I'm concerned, the application doesn't even need to be in Azure. It just needs to be able to connect to app configuration. So even if your application runs on a mobile device or on a Windows computer or on a Mac or on a Linux computer, if it has an internet connection, it can reach out to app configuration and get configuration values from there. It has complete data encryption, both at rest and in transit. And it has native integration with a lot of popular frameworks. For instance, um, uh, .NET, of course. So app configuration enables you to reduce complexity across multiple environments. If you have multiple parts of one application ecosystem, so to say, you can have all of the configuration for that application in one place and use it from there. But also, and that's the good thing, of course, update it from there. Now, um, next to the fact that you reduce complexity, you also improve security because you no longer have your configuration in your code. And I saw it again today, and maybe somebody else uh, has seen that also, that there's this, there's this um, comic about, uh, this, this comic, comic is used a lot, right? With a brain that's talking to you while you're getting, trying to go to sleep. And then the brain says something, and then you're wide awake and you think, oh, crap, I need to fix that one. Well, this is the one. So you want to go to sleep? Yeah, I want to go to sleep. You committed API keys to an open GitHub repo. And then the person laying in the bed is wide awake and cannot sleep any longer. Well, that's something that you could separate out by having configuration separated out from your code. So you don't even need uh, those security uh, important items in your source code any longer. Um, so this is a separate service. And since it's a separate service, it, it has its own pricing. And you have a free version, but you can have only one free app configuration instance on one Azure subscription. So there's one free. And after that, it will say you already used up the free versions of app configuration under the subscription. So please use the paid one. And then, as you can see on the slide, there's a couple of things that are different between free and standard. Uh, the most important thing to know is that the standard one will cost you one euro and 1.2 cents per day with an overage of 5.1 cents for each 10,000 requests that you have more than the 
free grant of 200,000. Okay, so let's make that into a calculation example because that was a hard one. So with an average of 400,000 requests a day, and please remind me, or, or, or sorry, please remember that 400,000 requests for configuration items per day are a lot of requests. You'll get a one euro and 1.2 cents base charge. You get 200,000 requests for free. So you pay for the extra 200,000 uh, and you pay for each 10,000 requests. So that's one euro and two cents for the extra 200,000 requests for configuration um, next to the free grant. So that totals to two euros and cents per day. Well, that's, as far as I'm concerned, not a really expensive service. But here's the kicker. It is extremely elegant in its way of connecting your application uh, to app configuration. So let's go into a demo right there. Um, we're going back to the application. And then I would like to show that um, we had that extra piece of application uh, code in program.cs, right? We remember that one because I frantically clicked it away as soon as it's as I saw it. What's actually happening here? And let me take this one out so that at least we can see all of it. Um, I'm even going to go and make it simpler because this is the way it's deployed currently. Um, what we are doing here is of course this is the create host builder and then we do web builder dot use startup startup and here we say okay on this web builder i would like to configure app configuration and this is in the microsoft extensions configuration uh, thing a nuget package which enables us to do extra cool stuff but now based on azure app configuration so we put in the web host builder context and configuration builder into the uh, configure app configuration. And then what I also have in code here, first we need to build the iConfiguration builder because we are getting the connection string for our app configuration from our app settings. So there is a location in which you would want to say, this is the app configuration I would like to talk to. So that also has a connection string. And in this case, I have the connection string in settings. Now, I can almost hear you thinking, okay, so now still I have this connection string that enables me to get all of my configuration. So how is this safer than having my connection string in the app settings because I can still go there? I have a solution for that as well. Please bear with me. But for now, this is how we configure app configuration. So let's dive into the details. We have settings, app configuration, connection string right here. So Looking at our app settings.json, let's go, of course, in application in Solution Explorer. I'm going to pin that so that you can see the entire um, secret. But here we have app configuration connection string. The endpoint is, and in this case, I've called it uh, CLR dash app config. So this is my resource name in Azure. And then the entire connection string is HTTPS CLR app config dot azconfig.io. So azconfig.io is the app configuration endpoint, so to say. And then this is the name of your specific Azure app configuration. Now with this connection string, I can connect to app configuration. Well, what does that look like in the Azure portal, you might say? Let's go there. So right here we have, zooming it a bit, right here we have App config, see other app config, which is an app configuration, which is exactly the thing that I just had a connection string for in my code. So if I scroll down a bit, then on operations here, you can see that there's a couple of things that are really interesting. So one of the things that's interesting is feature manager, because feature manager enables you to do uh, feature toggles in Azure App Configuration. So I could add a feature flag here. I could give it a name, give it a label, and uh, use filtering if I would like to. And then I can enable or disable features, which enables me to enable or disable certain features for certain specific customers. But that's not what we're here for today. 
we are here for configuration. Now, right here we can see Configuration Explorer. And the cool thing that I actually wanted to show you is how completely transparent this works in, in Azure, or sorry, in HP.NET. So switching back to Visual Studio, which is in Light Team, so that might be a bit waking you, uh, all of you up. Um, what we did in this program.cs is we added the Azure App Configuration to our Configuration Builder. And what it actually does, and you might have seen this uh, if you've debugged your Configuration Builder you know, uh, any time, it actually adds sources to configuration where to look. So I would like to remember you of the fact that our index page just goes to iConfiguration, which is injected through um, DI in the constructor. And the code of my application still didn't change. Of course, it went on the first run, I had this configure app configuration here already available. But all the rest of my code doesn't change. Even I'm not going to republish this. I'm just simply going to say I would like to create a key value thing here. I'm going to call this setting one because we've seen that one already. And then, hi, I'm from app configuration. With a weird typo again with the e. Somehow I keep typing that incorrectly. So now I have a setting one in Azure App Configuration. And while we wait, I'm going to duplicate this. And then I'm going to go into my web application. Oh, this is just the web config. I want to go to the website. And I would like to say, as soon as it comes up, please restart. Yes, I would like you to restart for me. And then after a few, it will say that it's not available. And while we are doing this, again, we haven't had any changes. Somehow I always have to manually stop and start for it to actually go straight up, right? If I do stop and I do yes, and now I have five, then it's almost instantaneous. Or it just takes a lot of time even to stop this application. Ah, there we go. So we're starting it again. Excuse me. Um, again, my application hasn't changed. I added app configuration to my iConfiguration builder, enabling it to also read from app configuration because it's just a setting store. And then if the settings not there, it automatically fall back, falls back to application settings from the app service. And if it's not there, it automatically falls back to web configure app settings. And right here, you can see, hi, I'm from App Configuration. So without actually doing anything extra to my application than I already had by adding App Configuration to the program, I have this available right here also. Now, one of the questions that, uh, again, is uh, good to think about is, well, how about the fact that I now have a configuration setting with a connection string that has a secret to all of my secrets? How am I going to solve that issue? Well, in comes Key Vault. And in the interest of time, I'm going to go speed up just a little bit. So, Key Vault is actually secrets management. So, where you can see app configuration for all of your configuration settings, your secrets like passwords or certificates or API keys can all go in a Key Vault. Um, it stores secrets backed by an HSM, so a hardware security module. And you should use this, because, use this because it can centralize your application secrets. It securely stores your secrets in your keys. It monitors access and use. So that's actually pretty powerful. And it's simplified administration of your application secrets. And it, it also integrates with other, other Azure services, of course, because Microsoft is really targeting Azure into being interconnected and having services work together and provide even more power than they already have separately. Now, Key Vault is a tool for securely storing and accessing secrets. And a vault is a logical group of secrets. So there's a couple of authentication options. You could either have a service principle and a secret. And then a service principle, of course, is a um, security entity in Azure Active Directory. You could also have a service principle and a certificate. 
which is a little bit harder since the certificate um, can be needed to um, to be recycled or renewed. And then the last one would be managed identity. And then without talking too much about that one, let's first have a demo about um, Key Vault. So we're again going to the Azure portal. That's not the Azure portal. I would like to go help me out to the Azure portal. And then right here, you can see I have a key vault. Actually, I have two key vaults, and there's a reason for this. Um, so Microsoft started out key vault with access policies, where you could hang different types of, or connect different type of um, policies of accessing secrets in the key vault to specific types of users. However, Microsoft already had role-based access control in the Azure portal and was actively and is still actively working on that one. So what they did is this is a key vault with the initial type of security. And now if I go to access control here, I think I should be able to, I need to find this, there's the, uh, access policies. So under access policies, you now have vault access policy as a permission model or Azure role-based access control. Now this is the, I'm going to call it old fashioned way of doing policies. So here you have an access policy and then you can say, I have an application and I give that specific types of rights on my, in this case, keys or on my secrets or on my certificates. And then the role or application that's in this list has those rights. I wanted to go with the newer version of this. So that would mean that if I go here and I go under access policies, I will see that this is Azure role-based access control. And then uh, what you do to connect to this is actually, uh, we used to be able to use, um, this is not the case, we used to be able to do this based on a connection string, but those weren't uh, called in the, or those weren't mentioned in the overview that we just saw uh, of uh, ways of authenticating to Key Vault. And the reason for this is that then again, you have a connection string that enables you to go into the, the vault of all of your secrets and get all of them out. So what Microsoft did is they created Microsoft Managed or Azure Managed Identities for Azure Resources. And Managed identities for Azure resources actually provides Azure services with a identity in Azure Active Directory, which means the platform automatically, if you enable it, gives an application a service principle, so a security object in Azure Active Directory, and then you can use that one to give it rights to access different resources like storage accounts or databases or key vaults. And that way, you are explicitly saying that this application, when the platform is able to uh, uniquely identify that application as being that one application running in my Azure subscription, if it's that application, then the connection can go through. All the others, just block them. Um, and that's, that's really powerful. Now, if we look at uh, the services that already support managed identities, these are actually growing fast. Last time I did this talk, I had half of these on here. And right now, these aren't even all of them. And Microsoft actually explicitly states on their documentation, we are in the process of integrating managed identities for Azure resources and Azure AD authentication across Azure. So these are uh, sources. This is where your application runs. So it might be an Azure function, or it might be a logic app, or it might be an Azure container instance. All of those can get their own managed identity and then access other resources based on that identity and then there's also a, a, a list of services that actually enables us to connect to them using a managed identity and those are at this point uh, listed on this slide and again microsoft is actively working on uh, providing managed identities for azure resources across azure now Let's see that in action. And then we can also see how we are going to talk against that key vault instance that we had in the portal. So um, what I did, and I actually, 
gave it away a little bit by doing this one, is on my Azure app configuration that I have available here, I can also say, hey, let's configure Key Vault on this. And for a credential, use a new default Azure credential. Now, this new default Azure credential is the most recent implementation of managed identities for Azure resources that you can use in your application. And um, we used to have a package that was called uh, uh, App Authentication, Microsoft Windows Azure or Microsoft Azure, okay, something like that. And then it has a, a App Configuration as a package or App Authentication, and now we have Azure dot Identity. So what we're saying here is use the managed identity of our application, set that as a credential for when you would like to access Key Vault. And then in the Key Vault environment, under Access Control, we can see what role assignments are there. And then I have my website available right here, which is a valid Key Vault secrets user. So the platform for me will validate that when an application is the Seattle website, it can talk to my Key Vault secrets. Uh, if I have an application that's called something else website, it will not be able to connect to Key Vault since it doesn't have a role-based access control role connected to it. I'm here also as a Key Vault secrets user because I need to be able to configure the value that we get from Key Vault. So that's why I'm, I'm here as a Key Vault secrets user as well. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to quickly show you that we have uh, two ways of connecting to Key Vault explicitly. And the first one is on page Key Vault 01. What we do here is we get a secret client. Again, this is a Microsoft uh, provided package to enable us to talk to Key Vault. And then we say, I would like to talk to this instance of my Key Vault, which is the C other KV2, the second one, so with the role based access control. And then I'm providing my um, managed identity, and I would like to get the secret with the value at secret one. And then on the second page, we're actually doing something that's even cooler because here it looks like we're getting it from configuration, right? We're just doing configuration.get value name of secret one. Now let me show you how this works. Because the first one, of course, explicitly goes to Key Vault. So going back to that application and I go to the Key Vault one page, I get this secret from Key Vault. And just to make sure that you guys and girls understand that this is I need to go to secrets. So here we have secret. This is the current version. And then if I show the secret value, it, it says this secret is from Key Vault. Now, the second way of actually connecting to it, that's the cool thing, is in app config, I could say under configuration explorer, create a Key Vault reference. So if I create a Key Vault reference here and I give it a name, I can select a specific key vault. I can select a specific secret in that key vault. And I can even select a specific version of my secret in my key vault, apply it, and then I have a key vault reference that's also available here because it's, of course, already added. And then what you can see all the way there is the fact that this is a key vault reference because it has the small key vault logo in front. So if I go to page two right here, this secret is from Key Vault, but I didn't even need to have a secret client to connect to it. One last thing, because of time, there's more services that we can connect to using a managed identity. So what we have here is we have a field I configuration and a default constructor and a next session string. And what we're doing here is we're building a URI to get the container of where the next session.txt file is located. And we would like to connect to that container client using our managed identity. Now we're downloading the file and showing it on page. And then if we go to the Azure portal and to the host, I am truly sorry, but I have one minute and then I'm really done with my, uh, with my session. Uh, right here under Storage Explorer, if we go to Blob Containers, we have this sessions thing and then we have this next-session.txt. Just to show that this is not smoke and mirrors, this is the only thing that happens in the back end. And then in the front end, we just show the content of that file. Now, if we're going to our application and go to storage, then we can talk to our storage account 
without using any secrets or connection strings, just by pointing to one specific container under my storage account. And then we can see the next session for you under the Azure Developer Track is Stacy Cashmore with Getting Started with Azure Command and Query. This is how configuration can be built up in Azure using Azure Functions, Container Instances, or any other compute service that's available and supported by, for instance, Managed Identity. But App Configuration and Key Vault can be used by all of those. If you'd like to see anything or everything that's used in this session, the source code is available on GitHub. The links to all of the documentations are all under this QR code or go to the urlist.com slash cialer, configuration in Azure, done right. All of the links are there. There's some links to some blog posts that I've written about app configuration and how to use it, and all of the extra features that I didn't even get around to talking about. Please go there. Please also um, think about the fact that these sessions will be uploaded approximately two weeks after today. If you have any questions, you could post them in chat still or go to uh, my Twitter or my email address and send them over from there. And then in the interest of time, all that uh, that's left for me is thanking you for being here. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Scottish summit and I hope to see and talk to you soon.